there's quite a bit of Tesla news and I'll go through that. But first, I'd like to thank all of my subscribers. We just hit 50,000. Thank you so much for liking and subscribing. And now we need to talk about this big mistake, which the Tesla board can still avoid, but the time is ticking. NVIDIA is reportedly in talks to invest in XAI at a valuation of 74 five billion dollars the final number may still change but it's probably roughly correct elon before has floated the idea of tesla investing into xai and that he would talk to the tesla board but we haven't heard anything about it and just last week we saw reports of xai raising money at a valuation of 40 billion and just in may XAI raised $6 billion at a valuation of $24 billion. So that report that I showed you earlier is correct and that NVIDIA is actually investing in XAI at a valuation of about $75-ish billion. That means the stock already tripled in less than a year. And I was so pro Tesla investing into XAI. I still think it's not too late. I think the company is still going to expand vastly in terms of valuation. So Tesla board, What's going on? We haven't heard anything about this at all. I want Tesla to invest at least some money into XAI for a few reasons. Number one, I think it's a great investment. Number two, it would remove any potential conflict of interest between Elon Musk dedicating his time for Tesla versus XAI. The idea of Tesla investing into XAI has actually been floated twice. Once about three months ago and then one more time last year, actually. Elon even ran this poll during the summer, should Tesla invest $5 billion into XAI? And the public overwhelmingly agreed yes. Of course, these people are not shareholders, so it doesn't really mean all that that much. But clearly, Elon was heavily in favor of Tesla investing into XAI. And so how come hasn't this happened yet? And Tesla right now has over $30 billion in cash. So it's definitely not the lack of cash. Tesla has quite a bit of cash. By the way, just to be a bit more specific. So right now, the valuation is around $40 billion dollars and Musk is expecting to raise more money in January at a valuation of 75 billion. I'm keeping this about Tesla and I think this is relevant to us Tesla stock investors. Elon Musk posted this tomorrow of course is the election in the US and Elon has made very clear where he stands and he just posted this as well. A lot of people still don't believe me when I say that the other party will do everything in their power to destroy me if they win on November 5th. The opposition basically says that Elon Musk was an illegal worker when he began his career in the US. Elon Musk explained his visa situation. He had a visa and all his papers were in order. Do I believe that they would come for Elon? I believe so. However, <laughs> they have been trying to do that for a while now and it hasn't worked. If anything, it has actually backfired with him buying Twitter and turning that into X. If you remember, there was a major campaign against Elon Musk at the end of 2021. Accusations were like, let's change the rigged tax code so the person of the year will actually pay taxes and stop freeloading of everyone else. Elon was definitely not happy about that. Interestingly also, Elon Musk in 2021 paid over $10 billion in taxes, which was the largest tax bill in history of its kind. So it's definitely not like they have started attacking Elon Musk only after he got Twitter. No, no, it has been going on for a while. It's just, it's been amplified by quite a bit. And they did not succeed in taking Elon Musk down. And I don't believe that they would even if they win the presidency. I personally believe that Elon Musk definitely deserves this trophy. Anyway, over the weekend, Elon Musk has been extremely active on his X account, posting a lot. But I'm looking forward to tomorrow and Wednesday. Hopefully by Wednesday, it's very clear who won and we don't need to talk about this as much anymore. But in the meantime, Elon Musk is being attacked from every direction. And regardless of who wins the presidency, I will stay a Tesla stock investor. I'm not going to sell anything. There are many predictions, though. What will happen to Tesla if one or the other party is going to win? And you didn't quite see headlines like this before. Tesla's stock faces a new risk, a Trump defeat. Moving on, back to Tesla specific news. Ark Invest sold a little bit more Tesla stock in the ARKK fund, though they still have over 14% in Tesla. So to me, I consider this as no news pretty much. That's as expected. This is some really good news. Tesla has secured a new $200 million mega pack contract in New South Wales. Australia. Tesla's mega pack business has been doing so well in the last few quarters. And I believe personally that this is just the beginning with the Shanghai mega pack factory being built. Tesla will take its energy business to the next level. And after that, we will see more mega pack factories. At this point, I think it's more that Tesla just proved 
that it's profitable, that it's scalable, and that this is really a big business that will benefit Tesla in the long term. Because if you really think about it, when you buy a mega pack, you just look at the numbers. Which one makes the most sense? Okay, buy that one. There's no, oh, uh, Elon said this, so therefore we cannot buy the mega pack. There's none of that. And with Tesla making its own batteries now, and Elon Musk saying that Tesla's batteries likely are going to be the most competitive in North America, hmm, yeah, that will only help solidify Tesla's lead with mega packs in the long term as well. Tesla has launched an unprecedented rate promotion of 0% in Japan. We haven't seen that in Japan yet. And the sales in Japan historically for Tesla, they haven't been good. So maybe this will finally move the needle a little bit, but the Japanese are very patriotic and they're not happy buying cars that are not made in Japan. And you get 0% if you get a loan for 60 months or five years. But if you get a 10-year loan, you do pay about 1%. These are incredibly good deals. This is a new disclosure from Tesla. It disclosed the percentage of parts in its cars that are sourced from the US and Canada for the 2025 model year. And you can see it's 75%, 75% for the Model 3 trims, and then the Model Y trims start at 70%, Sabotrek is at 65%, Model S 65%, and Model X, which is the lowest, stands at 60%. Still more than 50%, that's really good. For comparison, here are some trucks that are also popular in the US and most of their parts for example for the Ram 55% only come from the US so I'm is at 65 Toyota Tundra 55% Ford F-150 the gas version 45% only it's under 50% come on and the Lightning only 29% and they are supposedly proud to be an American brand you want to be a true American and support America, you buy a Cybertruck, not a Ford F-150. But hey, any vehicle you buy, I'm fine with it. I'm just saying, if you want to support America, you buy Tesla. And for my fellow Canadians, we have good news here. Tesla Cybertruck deliveries in Canada have just officially started. So we too can buy American <laughs> pickup trucks now, like actually American. A big shipment specifically is going to Toronto right now, which has just arrived. It took five years for the Saba truck from its original unveiling to first deliveries in Canada. There's an interesting move from Tesla in Canada though, uh, regarding interest rates last month. Interest rates, if you wanted to get a Tesla vehicle, were at 5.25%, and this month it has increased by a little bit to 5.46%, despite Bank of Canada cutting interest rates by 0.5%. So it's like a price increase, basically, that Tesla is doing in Canada. But with so many 0% promotions, I would expect something similar to also happen in Canada. Oh, well, will you look at this? What you're looking at is Uber, and you're looking at a drop of as much as 12.85% percent this was after earnings it will take a while for some uber investors to realize when tesla solves full side driving makes it safer than human driving ooh, ooh, that stock is just going to collapse tesla just did a new safety test in china for its model 3 and the results were great actually it even went through some really tricky tests like this one and look at what they're doing here many other cars would, would be completely destroyed and likely if you were sitting in that seat you would it would be your last day on this earth but not in a tesla in a tesla well it, it's not pleasant but he would have been okay this is really good for tesla in china this is being received very positively people call are calling it the safest vehicle in uh, the world you definitely don't want to be in a crash like this but hey if you have to be in a crash like this you want to be in a tesla ideally a cyber truck but a model 3 is pretty good too and in china the model 3 is actually the only vehicle that has passed a drill and crash truck test and is getting a lot of safety attention in china here you can compare the model 3 with other vehicles you can see the model 3 green green and not green but it's still decent well all lover cars either orange or red which is bad and tesla is just obliterating all other vehicles in this test and here's some more data the model 3 is right here you can see green 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 all green you don't see that with many other cars especially in this test right here most are just completely red tesla is doing some seriously good engineering with its tesla model 3 when it comes to safety oh and they actually translated this so you can see exactly which cars were 
in the test and which crash tests were which ones. I'm just so impressed by Tesla. Well, this is some good news. I'll definitely take this. Tesla has increased the EPA range on the Model Y long range in the US by 1% to 311 miles, up from 308 miles. So extra three miles. All other variants, though, remain at the same ratings as before. If you remember, I also reported on some vehicles not being delivered because Tesla needed to get the EPA rating. And now that the EPA rating has been officially announced Tesla should be able to continue deliveries again like I said before I didn't see that hold as an issue and it's proving that indeed it was not an issue Omar just posted this video on YouTube calling this the smoothest self-driving I've ever seen is entirely computer vision plus end-to-end -end neural nets uh, someone also commented until it rains it can drive smoothly but my experience has been actually i've been driving a lot here in vancouver and it rains a lot last few weeks it's been raining so much when i'm driving it feels like it's always raining almost always and i haven't noticed any degradation or worse performance when it rains when i'm on fsd it's just the same whatever mistakes it usually makes it's the same it's not more frequent at least from my relatively limited experience the only thing that's really different is the notification that i get <laughs> when it's raining and when i'm on fsd it gives me this warning and it, it's a little bit annoying because it makes the warning sound too fsd performance may be degraded because it's raining it's something like that that it says on the screen Ooh, Remember the accident, the Sabotra accident, where you can't even really recognize that it is a Sabotra? Well, actually, everyone survived. That's really good. Here are some more pictures. You really can't recognize that. I mean, if you didn't know it's a Sabotra, you would really need to look close. I mean, from here, you can sort of see it, but from that other previous angle, uh, well, here, I guess it looks like a triangle, uh, but it's so crushed especially here and here there's no way you can tell it's a cyber truck here cyber truck is tougher than a bag of nails says elon musk absolutely now some people got seriously injured but the point is no one passed away if this was any other regular pickup truck i doubt that everyone would have survived we have some video footage as well it looks terrible i'm just so glad that the people inside the cyber truck actually survived Oof. Well, if you want the safest vehicle, I would say get the Cybertruck or any other Tesla, but the Cybertruck is going to be the safest. Here's something really interesting I found, which is a direct comparison to Tesla, pretty much. There's this factory in Renton, Washington, which produces about 144,000 trucks per year. And the Kenworth truck factory is under 400,000 square feet, while Tesla semi factory will be 10 times the size and surely designed for vastly greater efficiency. That factory in Washington is already over 25 years old. The Tesla semi, I believe, is really overlooked by the mainstream Wall Street analysts. If you didn't know, there's a tunnel at Giga Texas and Tesla just started painting the interior of the Boring Company tunnel. And this is still in construction, but this tunnel is going to be used to transport Sabo trucks to the outbound lot for car carrier shipment, making it faster, more efficient and better overall for Tesla. It's not going to be too long before it's actually operational. I don't really trust consumer reports, but hey, if they're saying good things about Tesla, that that is an even bigger compliment because historically uh, it's been a bit questionable. But they say that Tesla cars are number one when it comes to the cost of maintenance. They're the cheapest. Here's the list. Cheapest brands to maintain in the long term. Now, of course, this is largely because Tesla's are electric and other brands are not. So this is not exactly apples to apples. But hey, this just proves that EVs indeed are cheaper to maintain. Ooh, Sawyer dropped a pretty interesting fact here. In just the past one and a half years, Tesla has secured $4.2 billion worth of new Megapack orders in Australia, a country that makes up only 0.3% of the global population. And we're just getting started in Australia. And on top of that, that's just a figure that we know about there actually may be more when it comes to massive supercharging locations this is going to be a big one Tesla is planning to build a massive 168 stall supercharger is going to be in California Sawyer is dropping some good facts here in the past six months Tesla has sold as many EVs in the U.S. as General Motors has sold in the last 10 years as we all remember when the current and president of the United States of America told GM CEO Maribara in late 2021 that GM was leading in EVs. It has actually sold only 140,000 units in the US 
up to that point while Tesla has sold over 1 million. And as of now, GM has sold a total of 300,000 units, so basically a doubling in the US, while Tesla has surpassed 2.8 million, almost a tripling. So not only was GM not leading back then, but the gap is actually <laughs> getting bigger, not just in the absolute number of units, but relatively speaking in terms of how many times, by how many times uh, Tesla is leading. Wow. I personally like this quite a bit. Tesla has launched third-party business tokens, allowing third-party apps to give more value to Tesla owners. Third-party applications can now interact with cars they have been granted access to by a Tesla for business admin. I definitely see this is a positive development. And here are the technicalities of how this actually works. Tesla just reached an important milestone in mega pack production at its Lathrop, California mega pack factory. Tesla just built its 10,000th mega pack at the factory, which is how many mega packs Tesla will produce once the factory is fully, fully, fully scaled each and every year. A big shout out goes to the Tesla mega pack team. If you go on X right now, you will probably find some rumors, speculation that Warren Buffett maybe is interested in buying Tesla stock right now. His company has $325 billion in cash, which is about 10 times more in cash than what Tesla has. And Berkshire Hathaway actually just sold uh, more of Apple stock, which is leading to some uh, saying uh, maybe he will buy Tesla. I would be very pleasantly surprised if he does it. I'm not expecting it, but I'm just sharing what I'm seeing. Here's a fun fact for uh, the, the stock market investors. Intel is being kicked out of the Dow Jones after 25 years and is being replaced by Nvidia. That's it for this video. Make sure to like and subscribe. And we have just hit 50,000 subscribers. I'm actually pretty happy about that and looking forward to getting to 100,000 subscribers. Thank you so much for watching, subscribing. It's been quite a journey and it wouldn't have been possible without you guys. So one more time again, I really appreciate you guys liking the video, subscribing. That really helps with the YouTube algorithm. It sends a big signal to YouTube. Hey, this is a pretty good channel. I want to watch more and this should be recommended more. That really helps. So thank you again so much for sticking around with me and I will see you again uh, probably on Wednesday this week.